Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. From home, honey. Hello guys and welcome to today's video. Um, today marks sort of a special milestone. It was four years ago today that I had posted on my Facebook page that I was so excited because we hit 1,000 followers. We had 1,000 subscribers on YouTube and I was just beside myself with glee because we had, uh, a couple weeks before that we're only at 100 and that was exponential growth. <laughs> and here we are today, um, closing in on I think 420,000 or so. Now. It's been hard work, don't get me wrong. Um, we put out a lot of videos and do a lot of editing and all that, but it's all been worthwhile and so much fun to see our business grow and do such uh, wonderful things that I never thought would be possible. So uh, before I get into today's video, just wanted to send off a big thank you. Um, but this is what's happening today. I'm working the store. I am getting ready for an auction and um, we are gonna be doing a big one. It's gonna be a doozy. October 3rd, we've got all kinds of stuff from um, my store. We've got some uh, items that the uh, folks that had uh, opened up the vaults, Madame Rack's vaults, you're gonna be bringing some jewelry by that was part of that. Um, it's gonna be a big sale. So I have to get uh, roughly 100 things out of the store today. My goal is to have a 1,000 items of my own at that sale. Uh, and then the other gentleman is gonna consign, I think, 300 lots of jewelry. So it's gonna be a pretty good sale, pretty big sale. Um, so I've got lots of work to do getting stuff out of the store for auction. Also, garage door going in, hopefully on the building, and I don't know what else is going on. Um, there's been some delays which have been a little bit frustrating. Um, it, the flooring guy just disappeared and uh, never showed up. The HVAC guy was about two or three weeks delayed. So all these delays mean that uh, my grand opening, which was planned for October 1st on the new side, might also be delayed as a result. But I gave myself what I thought was a month buffer. Um, I thought, well, clearly they'll be done by September, so I'll have all of September to get the place ready and open in October. Well, even with this buffer that I gave myself, they're still running behind. So um, anyway, let's go check and see how the building's looking. On the plus side, I guess I've got my, my red door in. The reason I did red on the door, and I'll go around to the other side to show you why I did red and, and talk about that a little bit in a second. Uh, anyway, the, the door is painted red. We can't do any of the trim until the flooring is in. Uh, we don't want to do the flooring until the door is in. We can't do the flooring until the HVAC is in, and there's nobody here but me right now. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna walk around to the front so you guys can see what it looks like. On the plus side, I'm making good progress in getting stuff hauled out of the store. We've taken already, boy, like a, I think 550 items over to the sale so far. I still have a lot of stuff in the back. I can thin out a bit here. Good news on my Simpsons game. It's working now. Um, that strobing line that you see, that's just the difference between the camera and the screen. It actually is working just fine. There's no strobe in real life there. Um, but yeah, we ordered a new board for it. The thing's working great. I even have new uh, graphics, but these original graphics aren't terrible. But I did get brand new bright ones. I might do that at some point. But all these little bits and pieces that are around here are going to have to go. Um, the Bobby Hall hockey game. There's just tons of little bits and things around here that uh, are going to find a new home. But for now, let me walk up to the front and show you the front of the store. And here, Zoltar trying to greet me. I had to fill up my tire the other day in the car. Gotta put that away. I've got a 50s table that was in the back of my new Ford that I have to find a home for. Everything that's cluttered and around here has an eventual home once I can get over to the new building. As for the new building, well, it's coming along. The uh, lights are all done and on on the top there. We've got um, our sign painting done, which I did in sort of that traditional early turn of the century style. Why did I say fancy provisions and dry goods? Because I want it to look like it was period correct. Something they might have said in that Victorian sort of Edwardian period. Um, and you know, it's not a different building. It's a continuation of my store. It matches with the heritage. And if people come by and they want to get their picture taken in front of the store, it's going to look correct. Why this door? Why the red door? Originally, I'm going to show you. 
originally we had plans for a glass door. Also, I was gonna paint it the same color. The reason um, I painted it different because I want it to look like its own building, like a separate building next door. Um, this glass door would have, per, uh, when we planned this ori originally, we weren't having the problems with break-in in this area that we've started to see since uh, COVID kicked in. So I changed out that door for a heritage style door um, that's a little bit more secure. And the window next to it will get some bars and this building should be nice and uh, secure down the road. That's why we are indeed. <laughs> I guess I better get myself back into work. I see a Bob, a Bob I haven't seen in a while. Hello. <laughs> You've been busy working. <laughs> I've been busy working nine to five for the last two months. And now I'm back to weekends. So. Back to weekends, keeping seniors safe. Yes, trying. <laughs> and um, you're here on the day that my garage door is getting installed. And they're doing it panel for panel over there. I've been looking forward to this pretty much all week long. It's looking absolutely fantastic. We did the uh, big glass panels. It's gonna let lots of nice light in there. I'm gonna let these guys finish up, but man, it's coming together, hey Bob? Absolutely. So uh, when we have, you know, I pretty much built this building for you so that when you guys come and you hang out, there's a place like some chairs and a place to hang out. And you know, we can socialize when Greg and yourself and Bill and Todd yeah. and everybody come through. Sounds good. Oh yeah, well it's, uh, slowly starting to look kind of like the picture except for the colors and stuff but ooh, i'm gonna i'm like i feel like i'm peeking around the corner at them what's going on what are they doing i'll come back and check it out in a bit in the meantime i have been filling up my vehicle completely packed full of stuff that's headed for the auction i have now i'm working on my 600 lots um list 600 items is where i'm <laughs> approaching right now Again, I'm trying to get close to a thousand for this sale. So I've, every day I get a little bit closer, I'm gonna go pack it up and at the end of the day, go drop it off at the auction. This is how much I've done so far. Shelves are getting full all the way around. I've got some big items behind me here. Camel stool, a trunk that came from the Cunard line, washer blade, thing. I don't know, there's so much stuff, but we've got uh, 350 more things to go. I'm gonna keep plugging away at it until this whole room is essentially full. But the guys have finished up with the garage door and I have to say, I think it looks pretty good. The whole plan all along was to have a nice big glass garage door that we could open up on a nice sunny day and have people stroll in and out of And I think we've accomplished it with this look right here. And I think now that they're done pretty well everything with the front of the building, I think it's gonna be safe to take this fencing down, let people use the patio again. They haven't been able to use it all summer long and. The whole reason I have it is for the neighbors in the area to use it when we're open. So I think I'm gonna take this fence down today. There we go. No more fence. I have to wash off the patio and sweep it up a bit, but definitely worth the wait. We've got this nice little patio happening now, some trees and flowers. The red door definitely grabs your eye when you're looking at it, and that's exactly what I was hoping for. It is a beautiful, sunny day outside. It's September. One of the last nice days we're gonna have for a little while. You enjoy this beautiful Saturday, this beautiful day we've got. I am moving my ambulance over to the store. And I'm going to be taking down the Jag to an old car show today. It's the 60th anniversary of the E-Type Jag. Um, they're doing an event where it's all British cars. It's called the All British Field Meet. It's been postponed for the last couple of years. The first time they've been doing it, or the first time they're going to do it again, um, in probably two or three years, possibly longer. So I'm going to take the car down there. But first, I have to get this back to the shop and unload some treasures that I picked up the other day in it. Um, so we'll go through some of my picks. I'll show you what I got. We'll do a little car show and uh, generally just have some fun today. So follow along on today's episode while I go out and do some random stuff and hopefully you guys find it entertaining. If you don't know this about me already, I'm a bit of a car guy. Doesn't matter to me whether it's a North American car, it could be an ambulance like I'm driving today, or it could be 
a 1960s E-Type Jag, which I'll be driving in a few minutes here. What matters is that I'm having fun and that it's cool. And um, you know what? Doesn't matter what country it's from or what make it is. If it's a neat car, I'm all in. Um, I've had, out of all the cars I've had, I've had the ambulance, I think almost five years now. It's one of the first things I picked up when we opened up our shop when we were at the old location. We've since moved over to this space. As you can see, it's really starting to take shape. And um, it's been a fantastic vehicle, but there's been times when even the ambulance, which fits a whole pile of stuff in it, doesn't cut the bill. And I've had to rent a trailer or a bigger truck or something. So I am sad to say that today is the day that I'm gonna be parking the ambulance because it's going to a new home. The gentleman out in uh, Montreal has purchased the car. And uh, now that it's here, just waiting for it to get picked up. So it's a sad day to see the car go, but it's gonna be going to a good home. He's an ambulance collector and uh, maybe he'll see some restoration, which it uh, probably needs that it wasn't seeing with me. Um, that said though, I'm still gonna have some fun today. We're still gonna uh, go to a car show and do all sorts of great stuff. But for right now, I gotta get all my stuff out of the back of that car because I don't wanna include it with the sale. Plus it's stuff for the store. So let's go see what I got in the back of the car and we'll get it loaded into the shop. Okay. Getting everything offloaded. And I have stuff that's been sitting back here for a bit. Sometimes I pick up old hardware like this and we sell it because um, if you notice, there's a lot of old buildings in the neighborhood here. 1930s license plate. There's an old uh, spotlight, accessory spotlight that goes in your lighter of your car. Kind of a cool accessory. Uh, vintage axes. Always people looking for old axes. Now, do you guys know what this is? I do. We'll see if you guys know what it is at home. It goes on the steering wheel of your car. You might say, why would you put this on the steering wheel of your car? Well, it's just what they call a suicide knob. You used to use it to rotate your steering wheel around so it would make it easier. Um, but it ended up becoming uh, improving to be sort of a dangerous thing to have on a steering wheel, so they outlawed it. But on uh, some really old cars, you'll find these. And this one is Bakelite, which is really cool. It's a nice early one. Don't find those in buckets full of stuff very often. Also some antique spurs. I'll have to see if I can find the maker's name on them. But sadly, there's several spurs here. And I don't know, well, maybe that's a matching set there. None of them match exact. That, that set is pretty darn close, but um, old spurs. Anyway, I'm gonna get this stuff loaded in the shop and I'll go through a little bit better there. That was the basement of a house the other day and it was just full. All the shelves were completely packed full of these antique Imperial gem mason jars. All the blue glass, where the, the glass starts to shade itself to a different color because of the, uh, the contents in it. But uh, these are old antique uh, mason jars. Really super cool and people use them for crafts, they use them for decorating. They give you that great country look. I've seen people make light fixtures out of them. You can do all sorts of stuff with them. So when I find them, I pick them up. Box number three, we've got some old calendars. This is a really early Texaco. Well, 1969, it's not that early, but it's still older. 1954 shortening bread advertising calendar for a dry goods store. We've got a model kit of a 64 Ford Galaxy convertible. Nice 1960s kit. Somebody has built it, but it's not been painted. So it's, it's pretty clean. And I think the decals, yep, yeah, they're all still there and the extra tires and stuff so you could soup it up are all there. Always nice to find something like that. An old cap gun, rotating barrel, button line special. A lot of these were made by companies like Hubley and so forth. Cap guns are a little bit, uh, they're increasingly difficult to find because um, they're not commonly produced right now for kids. So um, at least not on the shelves where I am. So there are many collectors for them. Let's see some nice Northern Bottlers Distributors Prince Albert. That's a soda bottle. I don't think I've seen that one before. I'm sure my friend Bob the Bottle Man would be interested in that. And the rest of this box is full of old 1960s catalogs. You look through and you see, you know, what stuff was popular, what fashions were popular back in the 60s. You know, who would think that just a few years later it would go to completely, you know, mod you know, crazy kind of stuff, but uh, very chic 1960s sort of uh, 
clothes anyway neat to go through so there's a whole box full of old catalogs anyway neat stuff i see some stereograph cards in here and uh sometimes you find some really rare sort of scenes uh where it'll be battlefield scenes ships all kinds of fun stuff so i'm going to go through there and see if there's any that are a little bit more on the historic side i had a set that came from the civil war and i sold those a while back and they had uh all the soldiers that had passed away in the fields it was uh kind of a macabre sort of thing but it was pretty pretty interesting part of history i'll get this box loaded in these were kind of neat these are hardware store wholesale catalogs that would have been uh, on top of the counter so if you went into a store very much like mine, you would go through this and they could order pretty much anything you wanted in. From engines to hardware. This was the main that you know, they bring in a variety of stuff. It's dated 1949. But whatever you could imagine your local hardware store could have brought in for you. Baking pans and stools and house paint, whatever you need. So these old catalogs are kind of a neat find. Frankly, you just don't uh see him turn up too often this one looks a fair bit older we'll see general catalog the jh ashdown hardware company all categorized you could buy uh oh so they probably update it's an older book but it's got slightly newer stuff in it probably got updated up to the 50s but the original case of this is probably 1930s but sometimes when you'd order something in it would uh, come with this paper label on it. Now, this somebody ordered in uh, a Meccano toy. Sadly, uh, the great, wonderful graphics on the back side of this are all covered in brown paper, but this is an original dinky toy box. Sadly, the toy is not inside it anymore. It's got coin rolls, but it's worth hanging onto the box because if you've got that 689 medium artillery, artillery tractor, having the box makes your vehicle more rare. Now, I'm not going to try and remove this paper label because that's an official Meccano paper label. So that's just the way this one happened to come. I'm going to leave it just as it is, bring it in the shop. As suspected, there were some military slides in there. And look, this is the Japanese batteries firing on Russian forts, the siege of Port Arthur. This was the... Um, uh, the Russians and the Japanese were fighting over interests that they had in, I believe it was Korea and Manchuria around that time. So these would be original pictures for them. The Japanese actually won. They ended up uh, coming up with the treaty. The Japanese won that conflict. And there are some photos from it. Really, really neat. Look at all the shells they've got lined up by the tracks there. They meant business. And then this is the uh, Irish Brigade on the firing line in the Orange Free State. We've got some early, early stuff here. That one's dated 1900. Nice to find bits of history hidden in people's basements. This box, however, is full of tobacco tins. We've got Rogers syrup tins. If you're in Canada, you may have seen many of these around. They're just a nice, bright, colorful tin. The more valuable tin actually shows the factory on it. Uh, so lots of little tins. Funny thing is, there was a box full of nothing but old uh, wall crank phone handsets. And that's great that they saved them because these are all in really good shape. And oftentimes people drop the handset, this early sort of bake light breaks and cracks very easily. So to find a little bundle of uh, handsets like that is actually kind of a good score because people restoring their phones will need that. Great stuff for the shop. And with that, the ambulance is emptied, parked and ready for its new owner. I'll be honest, I'm gonna miss the car. I had second thoughts about selling it. I didn't even have it advertised. The guy just kept calling and asking if I'd sell it. And right now, I'm trying to lessen the amount of vehicles and the amount of expenses we have is a big priority. So it will eventually be replaced with a trailer that doesn't require much for maintenance or costly insurance. But for now, I'm gonna go open up the store and head off to that car show. Shop is open, Sean is at the helm and I've switched out to the old Jag. Now it's time to go and check out the cars at the all british car show this must be the mini department where we've got your newer nice clean minis your classic minis your project minis and then your hot rodded minis which looks like almost uh honda engine what's the front end off of the whole yeah 
It's um, Clubman. a Clubman. Oh, front Clubman end. front end. Okay. Yeah. Well, I've never seen this uh, this setup before. Look at the slicks on this thing. It looks like a go kart. <laughs> Probably drives like a go kart too. Uh, yeah, a lot faster. Uh, I would bet. I always had that. I've been educated, informed. This is a Clubman front end, which would not have come on the car. That's why I haven't seen one because it would normally have been on something like the wagon over there. But this, look at the rust on here, but it's not rust. That's fiberglass. They painted it to look like it's rusty. In fact, the whole car, all this rust is just paint. This is intentional. Now, all of you that are thinking about repainting or restoring your cars at home, somebody did this on purpose. That's a whole look that you go for. This sort of rat rod kind of look. And that's a really talented person that can make fiberglass look like rusted metal. I think they did a great job of it. A nice little MG. 1930s styling, they built them like this right up through the 50s until about 54 or so. Melissa and I had one of these not that long ago when our kids were still born and with us. And I drove it all the way through until October and early fall. I put my top up and I had the side covers. It was a great fun vehicle, extremely reliable. I definitely have a soft spot for old MGs. They're just a fabulous little car and they're not terribly expensive to buy. You get the looks, you get the fun, you don't have to pay the price for it. These have always sort of got my attention but I've never found them interesting enough to buy. It's a Lotus Europa, this is series two. Very quick and fun little car. Kind of cute looking front end, very low to the ground. I can't I can't even tell you how small this is. It's like as low and as small as, it's lower to the ground than a Mini would be. You're practically lying on the ground in here. Challenges, kind of has a little bit of a funky looking back end. They always reminded me of like a little um, delivery van <laughs> into a sports car form. Not everybody's cup of tea, but they are a cute little car. And there are many people who buy them and love them so much. Just look at the interior of this guy. You got your wood dash, spot for radio, and the seats are so reclined. Like I said, you basically have to lie down because you're so close to the ground. It is quite seriously only about three feet up off the ground. Very funny, very cute little car. Looks like it's been freshly painted. Nice color on it. Looks like all the Lotus guys are together in their Lotus group. And then you've got the Triumph guys all together in their little group and they've got their lawn chairs out chatting and then the mini guys are over in that corner the austin healy guys oh sunbeam made it in with the austin healy's there's a tvr over there now this is a car that i wouldn't mind owning one day maybe not this exact one but not that i wouldn't like it i'm sure he's not selling it but it's a 62 austin healy 3000 it's a mark ii triple carburetor setup on it stunning looking car these have really gone up quite a bit in value they're small very small little car. In fact, not many people know that the AC Ace, which later would be known as the AC Cobra to most people, AC Ace is not a very big car either. AC Cobra is a British vehicle. They're not overly big, but this has a beefy engine in it. Very, very quick car, especially for its day. And uh, just fabulous lines to it. Removable hard top. Had a chance to buy one of these a few years ago for a very fair price, but I just missed it. There's always something cool around the corner. Seems like cars follow me home, but I'd be uh, more worried about getting rid of stuff right now than I am about buying. So for now, I'll just enjoy looking at it. You can see. <laughs> this is kind of a rare little beast. It's an MGB, but it has the Cartson hardtop on it. Oh, I see, yeah. I guess you take the trunk lid off, it gives you this little extra boot there. Right hand drive, unusual for where we are, but it gives it a very sporty sort of Italian kind of look. It's an Ashley hardtop, right? It's an Ashley hardtop, and I have a comparison to a Ferrari as well. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, a little bit of the Ferrari, kind of very Italian looking hardtop. It changes the look of the MG altogether. Very, so how many, how many of these hardtops are left, would you say? There's 100 made, there's nine left in the world, there's uh, three in North America. There's this one and two in Connecticut. And two in Conne Connecticut was a hot spot for Ashley hardtops, I guess. <laughs> Beautiful looking car. This is a pretty rare beast. And I have to admit that when I first walked up to it, I thought, oh, it's a very nicely done kit car. But I was wrong. This is in fact an authentic 1939 uh, Jaguar SS100, three and a half liter. It was uh, discovered decades ago 
after languishing inside a barn, restored in Poland and shipped here to Alberta. Of all places for this car to be, it's here in Alberta. Incredibly rare, incredibly desirable vehicle. Has lovely Lucas P100 headlamps on it. Just big old bucket shooting down the highway, beams of light. Lovely restoration. It was in Sweden at one point with the Naslin family, it's my understanding. And just a fantastically rare vehicle. One of the things, it's, it, it's so rare that you don't think that it's the real thing and then you're standing in front of it and you go, wow, heck, look what I walked past and didn't even notice. What a lovely car. The dual fuel pump, yeah, I think it was, uh, I did they had problems with the fuel pump or it didn't produce enough. So they put two SUs on there. And they raced, this was actually used as a race car for a while. Yes. Most of the racing career was without these. Right. They just had the small motorcycle. Wow. Things. Well, I'm done at the car show and what an event. Got to visit with a lot of friends, uh, got to see a lot of cool cars. I have to say, I almost insulted the guy accidentally, never on purpose, but almost accidentally insulted the guy with the Jag SS. It was so nice and so clean and so restored that it looked like a brand new car that I thought with the engine down, you couldn't see what was under the hood. I thought it was a replica. Who knew there'd be a car that rare here in Alberta, just hanging out at a car show. Uh, I mean, that is a, like people always say, oh, Jay Leno might be interested in this or that. But that is an actual like full on legit rare and valuable vehicle. Really cool thing to see live in person though. Um, but I'm not done for the day. I am in the old Jag on my way home from the car show and I'm stopping at a friend's place who has some uh, stuff that they might sell from an estate. So one more pick to go. Let's hope there's nothing too big because I don't have a whole lot of room back here, but I filled it up before, might do it again. That's it, I'm done for the day. And if you wanna see what I got in the back of the car, if you wanna see it in its entirety, you'll have to watch the next video, which will come out in a day or so, where I unpack the contents of the Jag but all together, it was a fun day today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We bid farewell to the ambulance and move on to brighter pastures and more adventures. We'll see you all soon. And as always, bye for now. Well, it's the next day, of course. <laughs> and I'm way more pooped today. I had 14 four-year-olds in my class today and whoo, they were a little bit more excited today than yesterday. So, I, I mean, it's so much fun to see that much excitement coming out of such tiny humans. And they're not so little, four-year-olds. <laughs> I had a blast, but am I pooped? And I saved the HelloFresh meal for now. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm not gonna do real-time cooking because some of you didn't come here to just see me cook. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prepare the meal quickly uh, find out how everybody likes it, but man, I gotta be honest. I am so thankful I have something that I can come home to that's already ready to go. <sighs> and it's not leftovers. We've had tacos three nights in a row now. <laughs> so let's get to it. It looks like it's gonna be amazing. It's super simple and it's everything's already ready to go. It was like having a, uh, what do they call that? The, the chef in the kitchen that gets everything ready for you ahead of time that that's that's what they're like having i'm gonna try this the kids picked pork chops and i have actually not made pork chops uh in a really long time i mean maybe over a year for sure uh, i don't even remember the last possibly more than two years <laughs> so, crossing my fingers it turns out delicious all right you guys let's get into it all right so just as a reminder it's the parmesan crusted pork chops uh, these are the steps of how to make it. It says it should take about 35 minutes. I've got the sweet potatoes, the peppers, the beans ready to go. I'm guessing that's the breadcrumbs, pork chops. Oh, I'm missing the Parmesan. It's in the fridge. Mayonnaise. So let's get at this. And right now, looking at all of this, this can be recycled. The bag can be recycled. I'm not sure if that plastic can be, but I'm going to put it in recycling. So far, I think the only garbage, unless I washed it out, is going to be the packaging from this and this. <laughs> but pretty decent, and it's only what we need for the recipe. So let's get on this. Oh. 
HelloFresh offers a wide variety of quick meal options like 20 minute dinners or oven ready pizzas. I personally am really looking forward to seasoned pork chops. I haven't had these in a while and Melissa is a great chef. I'm sure this will be a wonderful combination. In fact, I can't remember the last time we had pork chops, not because we don't like them, but sometimes you don't think of making different recipes and that's why HelloFresh offers so many recipes to choose from each week to help you break out of your recipe rut. There's a big variety of options and different types of meals you can select. The one thing I really like is that they are done and ready in 30 minutes, or sometimes even faster depending upon what sort of package you get. They're a quick meal, they're a fresh meal, and honestly, pretty glad to be getting this stuff from HelloFresh and eating their delicious food. Their carbon footprint, I mentioned it last time we did one of these videos, I said the packaging is better for the environment, and that's because everything is recyclable, all of their packaging is recyclable and you don't have the extra fuel that it takes to go from the store and then you have to go to the store and get it and bring it back. It goes straight to your door, quick, fast, and easy. If you want to spice things up with some different meals in your life, go to HelloFresh.com and use my code CuriosityIncorporated14 to get 14 free meals including free shipping. And how is it? It's super good. I'm not just saying that, it's really good. <laughs> I wanna eat now. Well, I guess supper turned out to be a success. Super easy on me, everyone enjoyed it. I'm gonna turn the vlog back over to Alexander.